Felicitous greetings, fellow fanatics. Pinball as we now know it predates pure video games by a little over two decades, and since that time, countless attempts to represent it in digital media have been created. Be it those meant to recreate real machines, tables that are meant to feel like the real thing but aren't, or wild adventures that span multiple tables in a way that simply isn't possible with real machines. While nothing will ever quite compare to the feel of the table between your hands, for most of us, owning a pinball machine is simply not an option. So, it's video games to the rescue. Hello again everyone, I'm Adam the Fanatic, also known as MarioFanatic15, and today we're going to be taking a look at Yoku's Island Express. A game by Villa Gorilla. This title is a hybrid of pinball and Metroidvania. And unlike a certain other game which should have combined these two genres, you know the one I'm talking about, it actually uses both of them to their fullest extent. Let's go ahead and skip right to presentation this time. So one of the first things you're going to notice about this game is, wow, the art is absolutely beautiful. The backgrounds are wondrously detailed. Now, I'm not normally a resolution snob, but I do hope you're watching this one in full 1080p because this artistry absolutely deserves it. Whether it's the verdant jungles you'll start in, the snow-capped mountains you'll scale, or the cavernous depths you'll explore, every scene is meticulously drawn, and I'd be doing a grave disservice not to bring attention to it. The music isn't my style, but it does fit the mood well, with thematic pieces that fit whatever environment you might be in. By the way, does the title song remind anyone else of that one song from The Lion King? You know the one I'm talking about. Wait, The Lion Sleep Sight isn't from The Lion King? In Yoku's Island Express, you'll take the role of a dung beetle postman that travels around a tropical island, delivering parcels and filling mailboxes. And let me tell you, delivering the mail is some serious business. From swift completion, From swift completion of their appointed rounds. Of their appointed rounds. As aforementioned, this title is a mixture of pinball and Metroid Vegas styles. Although you will be able to walk around the island as well, your primary method of locomotion will be through the many flippers and bumpers which you can control to move his ball around, with Yoku attached in the process. As you attempt to avoid dropping your ball into the gutters, you'll also be collecting fruit, which acts as a currency in the game, allowing you to unlock new pathways and purchase new items alike. If ever you drop your ball into a gutter with brambles, you'll lose a small amount of fruit, though this is largely inconsequential. Along the way, you'll find a handful of upgrades which will help you explore the island's secrets, including a party blower which you can use to break objects. I guess it's just that noisy. A creature known as a sootling which you can use to sling yourself off of certain flowers, and a fish which will help you explore the depths in mermaid-like fashion to find all sorts of underwater languages. You'll also find plenty of optional upgrades, including various cosmetic choices to change the design of your ball, wallet upgrades to hold more fruit, and items which will mark the location of hidden items on your map, though it's still up to you to figure out how to reach them. The story of the game is pretty simple. After the previous postmaster resigns, Yoku comes to the island to take up their duties. Upon arrival, Yoku finds that Mokuma, the island's guardian spirit, has been attacked by a mysterious entity known only as the God Slayer, and must gather the island's chiefs so they can perform a ritual to heal him. Is that in the job description? I'm not going to go into too much detail, as this isn't a story-driven game, but it does a good enough job of weaving its own mythos, at least. For the most part, it's a goofy game, it knows it, it embraces it, and it knows how to get a good laugh or two out as a result. Aside from a few boss fights, there's not much in the way of combat, though there are plenty of environmental obstacles you'll have to overcome along the way. These come in the way of barriers that you have to collect stones to open, pathways which are locked until you pay fruit to activate them, and stones that require explosive slugs in order to open them. As for the boss fights that are there, they're pretty fun, though it's impossible to truly lose them, so there's not much tension there. I'm not going to spoil the final boss here, but I dropped the ball numerous times in that fight with absolutely no consequence, and it really did cheapen the experience. I don't want every game to be as difficult as, for example, Celeste. But even games like the Kirby series, which are intended as easy games, at least provide tension by making sure there's some risk involved with your mistakes. I'm not saying that the game should require you to be deaf, dumb, and blind to overcome it, 
but should at least provide some level of peril, which Yoku fails to do. All in all, Yoku is a fun and engaging game that's an absolute marvel to look at. Visually speaking, the only game that immediately comes to mind that wins out over it is Epistorm. It combines both of its parent genres in a way that solidly represents each of them, mixing them together and weaving them into a coherent whole. Unlike the other bug-themed Metroidvania, you know the one I'm talking about, it does a great job of encouraging the player to explore, as well as guiding them along without ever spoiling the answers. On the downside, it does have a problem opposite of said other bug-themed game. Whereas that one is notoriously difficult and punishes players in ways that are outright unfair, this one takes the opposite extreme and makes failure seem completely meaningless as it comes with minimal penalties at worst, and oftentimes none at all. This takes away from the tension that's needed to drive a player to improve, and from the satisfaction of overcoming the challenges that the game presents. Still, if you don't mind an easy game, it does do a lot of things right, and is definitely worth checking out. I find Yoku's Island Express to be worthy of a solid 7.8 out of 10. Yoku's Island Express is available on PC via Steam and on all major consoles. If you're interested in purchasing this game, links are included in the description. But what about you? What do you think of Yoku's Island Express? Are there any other genres that you would like to see mashed together? If you have any questions, remarks, or posing points of view, leave them in the comments down below. And please remember to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. Until next time, farewell, fellow fanatics. Thank you again for watching. I have plenty more to share with you if you're interested. You can click up here above my head to subscribe to my channel. You can click over here on my monitor to see the most recent video that I've worked on. Or if you prefer, you can click up here to open this mysterious vault and see what video that the YouTube algorithm has picked just for you.